Hi, this is Rod Zink again, but this time I would like to give you a brief overview of your major project this semester, the analytical report, to help you get started. As you have read, there are two major assignments incorporated into your analytical report project in this course. The proposal, a semi-formal report written to your instructor to propose and seek permission to proceed with the exact scenario and rhetorical situation you want to write your analytical report in response to, and an analytical report that compares or contrasts two real alternatives of a business nature and recommends a preference between the two for a theoretical client, management, or other professional entity similar to the ones you expect to encounter in your professional future. I always like to start my explanation of this project by taking a look at examples of the final product of your work this semester to place the entire project in context for students so that they can hopefully have a clearer view of what their projects and reports will most likely be similar to by the end of the semester. Because of that, however, as well as from a practical standpoint, I have a few suggestions about how best to utilize and approach this video series in order to get the most out of it. First, plan on revisiting the videos and or assignment prompt sections on both of these individual assignments for clarification and guidance as you work through them. This will be especially important for the analytical report itself as it will be some time and a whole proposal assignment full of work until you really get moving fully on the drafting stages of it. This would be sound advice in any event, however. It also might be beneficial to skim through some of the analytical report video as it is somewhat developed because it is intended as both an introduction in this lesson but also as a more in-depth aid when you are closer to begin writing it. It is cool to watch every second of it this time around, but if you feel your eyes rolling back and your head about to explode, we suggest fast forwarding through some of it and just viewing enough to give yourself a good sense of what the report is all about. Two, as with the job packet videos, feel free to pause the video and take a closer look at the samples. Three, as always, too, remember that these are genuine student samples and are not meant to represent perfect examples by any means. We try to do only minimal and the most necessary editing to these so that you could see what real students were doing at different stages throughout the semester. You'll see a big difference, for instance, when you look at how much more sophisticated the analytical report we will look at first will be when compared with the proposal the same student had written earlier in the semester to propose it. Four, finally, as you have been learning, there are many variations and varieties of proposals and reports depending upon the rhetorical situation and different situational demands. The samples you will review in the videos are sound, but only represent a small vantage upon the vast diversity of possible proposal and report formats and features. That said, they will serve to give you a great base to begin building your own assignment documents this semester as well as your own base of skills. So let's begin with a review of an analytical report sample which is the end product of a student who graduated with a dual business and IT major bachelor's degree. We will see the proposal at the end of the video series in order to give you a better perspective of how these projects begin, progress, and are completed over the course of the semester. Now that you have been looking at the title page of the report for some time, I think it is probably safe to say that you most likely have noticed that the analytical report itself will be a formal report, complete with the front and even potentially some end matter elements, like the ones you have been reading about in reports with these more formal conventions. Here, of course, we are looking at the title page, and although this happens to be written for Penn State Harrisburg's IT department, most of these are written to mainstream businesses or professional entities well outside academia. 
In this case, how well a website feature interacts with a customer or client base is a business-related interest which will likely be of interest to all of you too when you work on your group project, which is basically a web critique, but it also fit this student's specialization in dual major perfectly, and that is what you will want to do for your own professional interests, even if you are just investigating what you think you want to specialize in right now. So this report might be more technical in nature than some of your reports, but it is definitely in the right range for our purposes here, and it investigates both a product and a process, which many of you may do one or the other in your report. So here we have a advantage of both. It also has all the working components that you will need, like the title, client name, date, and writer's name, that are standard conventional elements that routinely appear on title pages for reports such as this one. To begin investigating the actual report, the title page you are looking at here also has all the working components that you will need, like the title, web page navigation, drop down versus sidebar, the client name, Penn State Harrisburg IT department here, the date, the writer's name, in this case writer one, the entire report or document that is intended to actually take its place as much as possible in a very minimal form. The purpose of these executive summaries is supposed to be to allow an executive or another party or reader who needs to review and fully understand the report, its purpose, main points, arguments, conclusions, etc. in a matter of minutes or a fraction of the time that it would take to understand and read the whole report or understand the report by reading the whole thing, the ability to do so. This is a very important feature in business reports and a skill to develop for business communication. These can be placed right after the title page or as this one is right at the end of the front matter and right before the body of the actual report. For your reports, either placement is okay. And with that, we are through what is known as the front matter of the analytical report and many formal reports like it. The elements we reviewed here are the ones required for your report assignment. The title page, the executive summary, the table of contents, and the list of illustrations. You can also include other elements such as a glossary, a foreword, etc., but those would all be optional for this report. As we'll see, this one actually includes a glossary, but places it as end matter after the report body, which is also acceptable for glossaries and several other adaptable elements that can appear either as front matter or end matter in reports such as this one. So once we move into the actual body of the report, you will notice the page numbers shift back to Arabic numerals and begin again at the number one. If we shift our attention fully to the report introduction, it is worth noting that formal reports almost always have a section titled introduction because they include front matter or material before the body introduction and in addition to labeling what purpose the section achieves, the heading title introduction serves to identify the beginning of the body to readers paging through the document and also creates an identifiable marker for it on the table of contents. The something that this introduction doesn't need to have that other introductions often really should have is a cohesive forecast or forecast mechanisms to announce the exact heading terms of the first level headings to follow in the document in the order that they do. That type of forecast is optional in a formal document with a table of contents because the table of contents serves the same purpose. Nonetheless, many writers prefer to provide such a forecast anyway as does this writer in the last paragraph of the introduction here. And that is also something you can determine 
better armed with knowledge of the rhetorical situation and situational audiences and demands. Finally, what is left after you take the sectional content forecast out of an introduction such as this is a contextual forecast which provides them with whatever information and context they will need to enter into the text, if not comfortably, adequately.